Hello, everybody. Uh, this is my first episode of going through my uh, classical recordings, uh, talking about them because I don't know. Uh, if you enjoy it, that's great. I enjoy it, and that's really all I need. So today, uh, I'm going to look at some Beethoven. Uh, we're going to look at Haitink's Beethoven cycle with the Concertgebouw made in the mid '80s. This is coming from the uh, Concertgebouw Bernard Haitink Complete Studio Recordings box uh, that came out either this year or last year. Uh, so this is a surprisingly good cycle. I was thoroughly shocked to find out. Uh, so I grew up with Haitink's uh, cycle with the London Symphony uh, that he did on the LSO Zone label in the mid-2000s. And that's quite a, uh, a it was a good cycle. Uh, not exactly what I'm looking for. He kind of combined modern forces with a historical uh, practice and that's all right, but it it's not really what I look for in Beethoven anymore. And it, that being my first cycle, it was just Beethoven to me. I didn't know anything else. I enjoyed it. Uh, but, you know, I, as I've grown older, I've discovered more and more cycles, and I've become more and more picky. Uh, so there's that. Is that a great thing? Uh, but I like what I like. And this is, I, I quite like this cycle. Uh as you can expect, it's quite a lyrical, beautiful cycle. Uh, the Concertgebouw was known for their lyricism, their beautiful wind sound, their beautiful string sound. They're just a beautiful orchestra. And they, 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 they deliver what you'd expect here. Um, in Beethoven, uh, he really is a composer of dichotomy. Uh, he's a dialectical composer. Uh, most people, I say most people, it's a common thought to think that he's angry, and tempestuous, and, you know, with flame all of the time. And that's not true. If that's what Beethoven would be, he'd be boring. It'd be the same all the time, and that's not what we look for. Beethoven is a composer of contrast. And all great composing masters are masters of contrast. But that is what makes Beethoven truly special. He employs that flame, that uh, fuego, but on the other hand, you have this beautiful lyricism, this expression. And it's that balance of those two conflicting uh, emotions, characters, that create Beethoven's unique sound uh, and a, a lovely uh, proportion to it all. And we get half of that here. We get half. Um, we get the, as you can guess, we get the lyricism. We don't get so much of that flame. On a couple of uh, recordings and pieces in here, we do, but not on all of them, and not on the ones that really, really matter. So as you can imagine, one and two, four, five is quite good. Five is, is better than I thought it would be. Even three, three is quite good. The only thing that's missing three is an exposition repeat, which is too bad, uh, because I, I, I think the Eroica is one of those symphonies that needs an exposition repeat, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, that's all up to personal taste, really. Uh, I could delve into why you'd need an exposition repeat in Beethoven's Eroica, but seems kind of useless. So I'll play you just a second of Beethoven's Eroica, and I think you'll be surprised with the flame he gets out of this orchestra, uh, but also some lyricism, right? Uh, that, here we go. A very beautiful sound. Uh, let's go to the... Yeah. skip forward quite a bit, but I'll talk while I'm doing that. Um, you know, Haitink could deliver in certain moments, but by and large, he was a very uh, let-the-music-speak-for-itself uh, conductor. And I personally, th I personally think, and so does Leonard Bernstein, this is where I get this idea from, is that uh, the greatest conductors need to have both sides of this coin. You need to have the ability uh, to transmit music very transparently to uh, speak exactly what the music says, because after all, I mean, that's where we get the music from. The conductor knows, I mean, the composer knows best, boy. Uh, my marbles are full of mouth today. Uh, but also, you need to have the other side. You need to speak where the composer didn't really have the ability or the, the know-how. I mean, Beethoven was composing 
I mean, he died in 1827. The instruments then were definitely different than they are now. Orchestras are completely different. Halls are different. So you need to speak whenever a composer couldn't uh, in that day and age. Uh, I mean, that really uh, signifies... And it, the most important thing is you need to know when to do what. You can transmit a little bit of your own emotion into things, but you also need to give it the space to breathe. You, it can't just be an expression fest where you think you're better than the composer. But also sometimes, I mean, you need a little bit of the opposite. You need to keep it interesting. Otherwise, there's nothing special. You, you need to have a personal touch. And I think Haitink does deliver that here. Not as much as I'd like. I don't know if Haitink had much of a personal touch to begin with. Uh, he's he's not that kind of guy. He, he's very transparent. And that works in great pieces like uh, his Debussy is phenomenal. But other things, it doesn't really work as well. You know, his Mendelssohn, his Mozart, they're fine. But they need a little more, you know. So here's... the ending of the Eroica. Let's go forward a little bit. It's clean. You can see that he really does deliver some of that in key pivotal moments. And one of those key pivotal moments is his Ninth Symphony. I did not expect this Ninth to be that good, but it is phenomenal. It's one of the best Ninths out there. Do I know why? I don't really, uh, but he just decided to deliver some real emotion, some real, you know, German romanticism seriousness into this music. Boy, does it work. Uh, it is a really phenomenal ninth. His seventh and eighth are not good, by the way. They, there's no flame in them at all. And in the seventh and in the eighth, you need that spark. You need that Promethean, to use another Beethoven adjective. You, you, you need that kind of, you, you need that gusto and you don't get it. But the ninth, he somehow has a great ninth. The cast is phenomenal. I mean, that helps. Uh, you have Lucia Pop, you have Carolyn Watkinson, you have Peter Schreier, huh? and you have Robert Hull. Uh, so it's it's not lacking in any sense of the means, uh, or by any stretch of the uh, imagination. Uh, but you really do get a phenomenal sound out of the Contigabau. I mean, I'll just play a little bit of the scherzo. Such a forward timpani. That's what you need in this uh, movement. I mean, Beethoven wrote a forward timpani, why not give it? But I'll play you... The only thing that's too bad about... Oh, sorry. The only thing that's too bad about this is he takes the Ode to Joy section where it's just cellos and basses way too fast. Way too fast. And that's just a bummer. Um, but it is what it is. All right, I will skip forward to the place I, th the place I think transmits that sound best. And a sound I did not expect out of High Tank. Out of Bernstein? Sure. Out of Schulte? Of course. Out of High Tank? No. And that were per that's what perplexes me about this, this uh, recording. But I'll take it, right? it a lot longer than a lot of people. Oh, and his march is fun. And it's Peter Schreier, so it sounds great. Anyway, and his uh, finale is actually quite profound, too. I mean, the finale of the finale, the prestissimo. But anyway, that's this cycle. Uh, I'd highly recommend listening to the early symphonies. Um, six, seven, and eight are the weakest out of this cycle. Uh, but nine is, is quite good for no apparent reason at all, other than Haitink just had a good day in the recording studio. And so did the orchestra, but it's the Concertgebouw, so they always have good days. Uh, so that's this cycle. Um, I might talk more about Beethoven next. I don't really have a plan. I'm just showcasing what I enjoy and why I enjoy it.
Uh, and I think that helps me understand uh, what it is about music that I enjoy and why I enjoy music. And hopefully it might help you too. But for now, uh, that's all for me. So uh, take care and have a good uh, beginning of your week.